Hello, welcome to the Empath Heart Healing YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Empath Heart Healing is a platform, a safe container, a service, an energy, a vibe that supports empaths and energy sensitive intuitives. Um, with this platform, I'd love to be able to bring on some beautiful high vibe impacts, such as the one we'll be working with and talking to today, um, just to share experiences so that we can support our community. Empaths are often, uh, you know, doing their service work, but often feel very much alone. And we are here to support you. So thank you for being here. I am so excited to introduce my good friend, Lindsay. Today, we'll be exploring subjects such as high conscious creating energy hacks to protect from energy drain. And we'll be developing, talking about how to develop your spiritual brand in a high conscious way based in Los Angeles, California. Lindsay is a graduate of Johns Hopkins University. While initially participating in the pre-med program, Lindsay discovered that in addition to studying at an anatomy, <laughs> she was drawn towards business development and marketing, as well as holistic approaches to wellness. After receiving a BA in public health, Lindsay's life became an explorer's dream. That's my, my word for her. <laughs> Where her real life adventures include travel to over 30 countries, careers in finance, education, fitness, marketing, healing, and wellness. She has 12 years as a leader in professional pole fitness, including creating, developing, and hosting several well-known events within this industry. She has 17 years of yoga practice with teaching certification. Her explorations and studies have given her the opportunity to blend Western science, physiology, Eastern medicine, yoga, and many healing modalities into grounded sacred offerings. As a divine translator and conscious soul guide, she merges science and left brain with spiritual, creative, and right brain strategies in such a balanced way. This ability allows her to conceptualize an individual's business strengths while at the same time protecting the spiritual integrity of their work and goals. This is done by assisting her clients with soul alignment as the foundation from which practical action steps are applied. Her brilliance includes conceptualizing your overall business plan and assisting you with designing your soul aligned work. This soul approach to business is complemented by her spiritual gifts and energy healing work. She, to me, epitomizes the concept of conscious creator. So welcome, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Eileen, that was so beautifully synthesized. I really, you know, I really, I've, I've known you as a personal friend for so many years, but I've also known you, I've known the business side of you that is a developer and uh, a creator and a choreographer, but not just of dance, you choreograph, you know, people's business, you, you are really just such an amazing innovator um, an entrepreneur and so humble and such a beautiful soul. And I, it's hard when a person is so gifted to bring all that together in a concise way to say, this is who she is. But, you know, I, I really wanted to just do my best in trying to bring so many different parts of you together. So thank you for being present. Welcome. You are also an empath, also an intuitive, also psychic, you know, so many things. And I'm just glad to have you here. So, Thank you, um, so um, my first question for you is just what is, we, I, you know, I kind of highlighted it, but what is your background, experience, and areas of expertise in the spiritual and non-spiritual sectors of life? So just if you can, from your perspective, give yeah. your yeah, so I think the root of my work is always in health, 
And then I think, well, what is health? And health is balance. So that's always been my driving motivation is allowing for health, allowing for balance and always asking the why. Why are we here? What's our purpose? And so the why has always been my driver. So with health and the why, I feel like um, that's always been the work and creativity. So creativity as in the expression can always change. So whether you're creating a design program for someone and their health or you're creating an event or an experience, it's taking what is in the environment and then shaping it to the people, to the ambiance, to the energies. And so I think that one of my main uh, points of contention has always been trying to fit into boxes and being like, well, what title can this be? And finally, I just embraced, it's always around the summer solstice, which is now very fascinating where I strip clean of titles. So whether at a point I'm calling myself a expert pole master trainer and a co-founder and a president and all of these titles, I sometimes swipe that clean. And I'm like, I am, I am, I just am that. And so I don't know if I answered the question. Yeah, you did. And, you know, I love a couple of other questions, but I love um, how you give yourself permission to clean the slate and create new energy, you know, and I, one of the questions I ask myself all the time, and I also ask my clients is, who are you now? And then the second question is, how how do you want to move through the world now? And I think it's a very important question so that we don't get stuck in any particular title or any energy, even though, you know, we are the accumulation of all of our education and our experiences and but it also our now moments are extremely important. And sometimes there's new energy being offered. So I love that. I really relate to that. Okay. What do you consider a light worker to be? I consider a light worker to be one who works with light to be, to put it simply. And I think for each and every light worker's journey, their work looks a little differently, but it's allowing like our light grid, whether it's in the human body, in animals, in nature, in the world, in communities and systems to flow, just like the many energy channels. And, you know, if you look at an X-ray or uh, a scan of the nerves in the body, it's all these channels. It's like a light worker is the person who will either increase the power through the channel turn the power on. If maybe a channel is broken or needs repair, the light worker knows how to go in there and do it. So at one point, light work to me was literally moving light astrally um, in energy healing light work on people. And then also I think light work can be done physically with acupressure, acupuncture. And so I, I feel like light workers are those who allow light to flow in harmony with Mm -hmm. the divine and in with nature. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. And empath heart healing includes not only empaths, but light workers and way showers. And there's so many different names. We could say healer, right? A medicine woman or man or (laughs) shaman, right? There's so many beautiful terms. So what do you feel like the biggest challenges are for light workers in business as they're operating their business, as they're trying to get their businesses started, as they're trying to market themselves? Yes. It's all about branding right now. What, what does that look like for light workers and what are the challenges? I think with light workers, the work can be quite subtle and therefore requires certain energetic maintenance and health of the light worker. So I see one of the major issues being that when you start your own business, you need to know everything from ground zero. So you need to be doing your client services, your administration, your bookings, all of these things, starting a website, building a logo. There's just so much to business. Mm -hmm. And the light worker is really focused on their work. I have a friend who said, Lindsay, she's an Ayurvedic practitioner. She says, Lindsay, I am so relieved. I just got an assistant who has been handling all of my stuff and now I can just do my work. So I think that the biggest thing is, um, 
first of all, recognizing and knowing you're a light worker and really embodying and doing that work. But then how do you balance living in, say, a city like New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, where you have to make money to even live, Mm -hmm. but you also are doing your sacred work and you're starting a business. So I think um, really being open to help and delegation, and it can come in many forms because oftentimes light workers don't have a big um, savings account or an investment account that they can just hire a bunch of services to do that other work that's not their specialty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. And how do you see empaths slash uh, light workers elevating humanity? Obviously, like you just said, there's different types of light workers and they're interested in doing their service work. How do they individually and, and collectively actually help our planet as a whole? Yes, I think it starts with the light worker themselves. And when you take care of your own self, you're able to shine your light in the world. So everybody you touch, you're helping light them up. And then as you extend your work to others, you're also elevating that condition, whether you're in work or you're just in the store and that accumulation of the lights everywhere overall amplifies the tides. Like, you know, when, what's that expression when one boat rises or the tides rise, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it's like, we're all doing individual work, but then because of our own work, we're doing it together. I like to think of the visual of synchronized swimming So if you know synchronized swimming and you're in flow, you could be a synchronized swimmer doing a dance in Italy, in Spain, in Africa at the same time. And then we're doing the dance together. It's so true. It's interesting you bring that up because when I was first awakening, I used to imagine a beacon of light shining through my being, like going up into, I guess the, you know, space. And I would always, I would, for some reason, I'd always go to France and I would imagine there's somebody in France who's also got a beacon of light and our lights are connecting. Like I I used to just always sense that. And then eventually, okay, Africa and Brazil and all the different places. So I love that. And you went to France. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And I, oh, and that's a whole other thing I'll have to tell you about France when I went, because we were in a conference room at one point that was right on top of a ley line. Wow. And all the power was coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so this ties in a little bit to the previous question. So oftentimes healers are also small business owners or entrepreneurs in your work, helping the light workers develop their brand and business. What do you can, you know, observe as concerns, themes, challenges, obstacles, strengths, and unique aspects of light workers? You may have feel like you've already answered that one. So I'm going to bring in the next question because I think it ties in also to an earlier question. What is sacred partnership? And how do you know that you're in alignment? Yeah, so I think sacred partnership is a chosen connection with somebody over a period of time where you can actually continue saying yes and committing to that person to build something over time. So it doesn't necessarily mean that as sacred partners, you have to do uh, work forever or it's the one like you and I are, so we're mysticas We're you know, we're sacred sisters doing our spiritual work and I feel that we can have many sacred partnerships and the work is divinely led. So we're Mm -hmm. just channels and gateways for the work and it comes through us and we get to do it with one another. We're not doing it alone. And I remember, I mean, when we went to Shasta a few years ago, around this time, you know, two years ago, we realized when I had the keys, we're like, oh, we each get a key, but no, that wasn't, we shared the key. And I realized at that point, like this journey, this riddle, these adventures we're on, we're meant to do them together. Yeah. And you know, what's so wonderful about our relationship. And I hope this encourages anyone who's watching this video. We knew each other for years 
before we were real, we realized that our spiritual paths were were really aligned as well. We knew each other from the pole community, dance community, and you know, over the years, our sisterhood has just grown so strongly. And what's so beautiful about Lindsay and my relationship is that we can talk about business and strategy and very serious things and get down to the nitty gritty, and we work very well together. But we're also you know, these spiritual beings, you know, and we're also kind of like, we've got fairy energy and we can be, you know, so silly and giggle and dance, you know, and do ritual ceremonies together. And so we truly have sacred partnership. And I know a lot of times empaths feel alone and isolated and unseen and unwitnessed. But when you're in your highest vibration, aligning to your highest self, being the best version of you, of you that you can be, and you don't have to be perfect, but just attempting to be your best version. You know, the universe, God, nature, creation has this beautiful way of bringing what you need and you will always be witnessed and you will always be seen and you will always be known. I love that. And yeah, Eileen, I think it's sometimes tough as an empath because the gifts are so delicate and precious that the regular harsh, you know, capitalistic world doesn't see that as value in gifts. So people will spend, you know, $10,000 on some piece of furniture, but then they won't pay an empath for like their gift of healing or art or something. So it's just this idea, I think as empaths reflecting and mirroring and honoring and celebrating empaths really elevates this and elevates value for, for them and their work. Yes. Us and, our work. and it's, it really is that balance because most empaths are coming from the heart space where they really want to give and generally will give more than they receive. And we're happy to do that because it's our service work and it's our soul work. And yet the balance of knowing your worth, honoring your worth, um, allowing people to pay you for your services, you know, that is a, a very important part of the journey as well, owning who you are and honoring who you are. And there's always a way to help people who maybe can't afford your fee. There's so many different ways. And we're here to support you and give you um, suggestions. If you reach out to us on our website, uh, www.empathhearthealing.com. If you ever are wondering, how can I help a particular person or population that can't afford my fee? What are some suggestions? We would be happy to share what, what you can do. Yeah. And so... Um, how do light workers, empaths, and way showers align with the highest vibe for their offerings and services to be, you know, witnessed? What do they, what is the, I guess, the self-care practices or the rituals or the ceremonies? What do you suggest? Um, and obviously everybody's different and everyone's going to have their own niche, right? But what are some things that you might suggest that would help them align so that they can be in their highest vibe so that their offerings are received. Yeah. So I think a lot of uh, empaths or way showers, light workers often go through journeys in life of transformation and the whole cycle of life, death, rebirth, resurrection. And so a lot of the energies I believe are starting new, starting new, and so just like a child, you would expose them to different activities, like let's try dance, let's try music, let's try writing, math, all these things. I would say to for the empath to expose themselves to different health practices, different self-care practices, and then see what resonates with them and then practice those things. And over time, if those things don't resonate, be okay to put a tool down and pick up a new tool. One thing that I always advocate for is to not get too uh, stuck in dogma. Like this is the way, this is what health is. You have to eat this way. You have to sleep at this time. You have to, you know, all these things because it's not for everyone, particularly empaths and light workers are all different. Mm -hmm. So I'd say to maybe uh, consider healthcare plans, self-care plans, try them just like you'd experiment with the new herb, see what its effect is on you and then cultivate your own health system. 
So really mm -hmm. like speaking to the, yes, consider what's out there, consider uh, all the, all the advice, um, but then really make it your own. Mm -hmm. And so for brand new baby empaths who are just realizing that you're an empath and this is all so new, um, play around with crystals and read up on crystals, uh, take beautiful hikes, long walks in nature, uh, um, bodies of water, earth, forests, these mountains, these are wonderful ways to recharge your energy. Also singing bowls and, you know, sound baths and meditation. So again, we're here to assist you. We realize within our community, there will be seasoned light workers, of course, who've been doing this a long time, but there are also going to be newly awakening souls who are just discovering that they are intuitive and psychic and empaths and we're here to support all of you yes and one thing i want to add is if you're kind of like unsure what to do just do what lights you up what gets you excited if it's a crystal if it's a card if it's a teacher and just follow that what lights you up what brings you joy Remember when we were in Shasta and we both bought Lemurian crystals and then we discovered that they, they actually like connect? They have like a groove in them that looks like they can't, they were supposed to be together, of course, right? Yes. <laughs> we have some magical things to, to share, like when, well, we'll get into that later. <laughs> the lights flickering in the cabin. Oh gosh. At three, three, three. In the morning. Yeah. The Galactics were calling and we met them. Yeah. All right. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Um, so what are, this kind of ties in to what I just asked, but I now want to focus more like on protecting ourselves from energy drains. So what are some energy hacks or tips so that we can protect ourselves from drain when we're super busy, engaged in our work, working with all these different types of personalities, just trying to, you know, stay above water? What, what are the things that maybe you do? And I'll, I'll share some of the things I do as well. Yeah, I would use the word design your structure, a structure for health. So that could be including boundaries, a schedule. So I like to think of this image of say you're in the desert, right? And it's really hot. You need to make sure you have your water. You might get some shelter. So giving yourself, identifying your needs and then giving yourself permission to receive that. So if you need more water, if you need to go under shelter because the conditions are too hot, if you need some alone time and people are, kind of overtaking your schedule or taking up your time to really set the boundaries and using your words and your actions. So enforcing it with, you know, set your boundary with the way you clearly speak to someone. And then I always like to think of boundaries as a, as a blueprint line, and then the person can cross them. So you're not declining anyone's free will People can cross your boundaries, but then if and when they do, that's when you reinforce yeah. the words. Yeah. So yeah. structure and boundaries and being adaptable, knowing that your needs are going to change at different times. And as an empath, having alone time to recharge your energy and then connecting with like souls can be so uh, generating. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, you know, and again, we don't want to, we don't want to get stuck on dogma or anything like that, but sometimes depending on the season of my, my experience, it's getting up every morning and before I do anything, really going into that sacred space and just connecting. Sometimes that's connecting with our beautiful planet, you know, Earth, Gaia. Sometimes I'm honoring or connecting with my ancestors. I'm loving, you know, connecting with the different parts of who I am um, as a being. Um, just sometimes it's, it's sacred music in the mornings and that, you know, on that note, we are sacred. So remembering that we are sacred. And so from that perspective, it can, I often do yoga in the morning. Just, these are the things that just help me blow out the energy, um, 
of either the work that I'm doing or the energy of the day or personalities that I've dealt with. Um, and when you get an energy healing of some type, whatever that is, just know that sometimes you'll find yourself extremely tired and need a nap. Sometimes you have a surge of energy and you want to walk around the block. Sometimes you are starving. <laughs> you want to eat a really good meal. Other times you don't want to eat at all. So just know that depending on the way you're taking care of yourself, whatever type of um, way the energy is moving in you, you may notice the physical body does certain things or you may need to journal because now a lot of different um, thoughts are coming up and you're you're healing and the oftentimes when you have some type of healing whether it's a do-it-yourself healing or you go and work with a practitioner the healing is ongoing and the integration process can go on for hours days weeks sometimes months it just depends on what you moved through so don't judge yourself or compare yourself to what anyone else is doing honor your your body honor you know be in soul alignment where you're really listening to your higher self and doing what feels good to you Another thing is because we're sacred, you know, sacred movement. So sometimes I'll just go in the morning and I'll just move my arms and my hands and just remembering, yeah, I'm sacred. <laughs> I'm just honoring all the energy that swirls around me and all the love and the light and the protection and the protectors and the guidance and the angels and the source of creation. And so that movement is awesome because it can just shift um, a lot of heavy energy or negative energy it can prepare you for the day. You can do it in the middle of the day. To You can also shake off energy. I do this a lot with breath. Ooh, you know, and it just feels so good. This calms the nervous system and gets all that extra off. So you'll find your way. You'll figure out all your own little energy hacks, all your little fun things, mantras and affirmations, things to say. And then, of course, there's your high vibe tribe your alignments, the people that are safe, like my beautiful sister here, um, that, that you can talk to and share your, your innermost heart space with. Um, that's also, you know, very healing and can help you balance your energies. And it's really good to make sure you have some high vibe aligned um, frequency humans in your life so that they can balance out, you know, the, the personalities of some of the, the others <laughs> that are in the world. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so Lindsay, who are some of the light workers or leaders within the wellness community that are offering holistic approaches to health that you want to give a shout out to or highlight? I love, I love just sharing different, you know people who might not necessarily be on the radar screen of the general public. So if there's, if you want to name two or three, I would love to hear, you know, how you've either worked with them or what you think is amazing about their work. Well, you, of course, love. <laughs> and um, let's see, I want to give shout outs to Amy Bello, who is a beautiful healer mother. She attuned me to Reiki. Uh, so Amy Bello at Altered Space, and then Julie Bernier of True Ayurveda, and also Hilary Branoff, another Ayurvedic practitioner. I feel like I'm drawn to their work because one of my most um, tough, I guess, my challenge is the physical. So physical health, physical body, eating and move, all those kind of things. What's the healthiest for the physical. And so I feel like Ayurveda is an ancient science rooted in, you know, um, tradition and medicine that is balanced with the seasons. And there's just so much beauty to that system. So Julie and Hillary, and then my magic teacher, Naha Armadi, who you oh, know. Yeah. We, love Naha. we love you, Naha. We love you, Naha. Yes. And yeah, I mean, I just feel like there's so many light workers who are doing their work via healing. And then there are light workers who are, you know, in roles at big corporations and they might be a marketing manager, but they're still a light worker. So mm -hmm. beaming light to every and all light yeah. workers. And we're all working together. We're all pieces in the super puzzle and every part is important. 
you know, so it's beautiful how we're all doing our work. Thank you. And um, okay, so you and I were, we've been talking about how the time of the guru is fading. And I hope this doesn't offend anybody. But let's, let's kind of dive into it, you know, as people own their own self mastery. um, I'm just curious from your perspective, how does listening to the self and following intuition support high vibe living and where we are now as, as a consciousness? Yeah, I think that um, just related to the time of the guru, where this guru idea of like, this is the way and this is what you should do, I think is outdated, right? Because that's based on, you know, someone else's belief system. And it's this kind of leader follower model. And so I think that, of course, there's the teacher and the one who passes down the wisdom and they're teaching, but then it's the student who's doing the work. Um, so will you repeat the last question? Uh, yes. So how does listening to the self and following intuition support high vibe living? Oh, yeah. So I think that listening to the self, I, well, it's great to expose oneself to all of the teachings, but then listening to what really authentically rings true to you cultivates a sense of integrity and authenticity within your own vessel. And when you are in your own vessel as a whole integrated human, that's when everything aligns. I like to say align, activate, create, because when you're aligned, you're activated. And when you're activated, you just create and you're in flow and it's this circular movement. So there's nothing more than, you know, like knowing who you are to a certain degree, shining your light, doing your work. And I think it just goes to testing, be like, oh, I heard that. I learned this. And is this true for me right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And always do your internal checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, you know, and I feel like self mastery doesn't require a lot of studying. It, it, it includes studying, reading, you know, sometimes taking workshops and classes, but there's something about going within and really honoring your truth and grounding and anchoring in that and being okay with who you are and your unique energy signature. The unique way that you move through the world is enough, even without a lot of training, because that's going to allow you to access your higher self and your soul and be guided in an authentic way. And the training and teaching will always be available if you really need it. And as will the uh, aligned humans and the opportunities and, you know, the frequencies and the the vibes that will all come as we're in alignment. So it's just a very beautiful for, for newer empaths, you know, um, who may be experiencing uncertainty and even some self-doubt, trust yourself, honor your gut, get super comfortable with who you are and your own higher self and learn to listen to that inner voice and unapologetically follow that, you know, and, and here's the thing, if we do quote unquote, make any mistakes, it's a lesson. There's always a lesson to be learned. You're, there's wisdom that's going to be gained and we can try certain things and some will work out and some won't and it's okay. And it's all a learning lesson that contributes to our flow and contributes to, you know, forward movement. Yes. Yes, I mean, I just want to add one more thing. You made me think of it. So in our mystery tradition, there are three steps to Solomon's temple. And step one is know thyself. Mm -hmm. Step two is master thyself. Step three is become thy highest self. Mm -hmm. And in many spiritual lineages and traditions, once you have the tools, like even the Buddha taught this, here's all the things, right? This is, you know, usually through question and answer dialogue, but then you throw out what you learned and you embody it. Like if you go to Japan and read the texts of um, the ancient, ancient, like Zen masters, there's one line. And so he put his arm out and the enemy fell. It's like the (laughs) masters, the masters don't say they just are. 
the force. Oh, wow. This is exciting. And like, um, I haven't, I haven't studied Qigong as much as I'd like to, I'm looking forward to, but I've heard some stories. I've read some really powerful things of people blowing out a candle from across the room with just their energy without yeah. even really doing anything. And that's some power, right? Yes. And even in the Emerald tablet, the greatest work is when you uh, you create the macrocosm here. So it's moving matter, you know, moving objects, that kind of energy is really the mastery to bring brought down into this earth plane. Yeah. And we do so much work in the higher planes. And then when it starts directly affecting matter here, that's like the work, you know, yeah. take it to another degree. So beautiful. Yeah. All right, my dear. So um, what lights you up? Oh, my <laughs> like, God. You know, what, what, what are thing. the things that lights your soul? And, and also, you know, what else do you want to share with us as we're yeah, winding? So what lights me up is always nature, always authentic connection with people and adventures, travel, seeing new places, learning um, so learning, studying, experiencing, dancing, moving, uh, I would say that's what lights me up. Yes. And Lindsay is the one who will, she, you're always invited to go on a hike with her, but she will hike the mountain alone. <laughs> <laughs> that's no problem hiking the mountain alone. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> it was like 121 degrees. And Eileen's like, I think I'm going to pass in the desert. And it was like a jagged cliff <laughs> with rattlesnakes. <laughs> She's going, like, like always, like pretty much you're always going. And I love that about you. Okay, so how can our community connect with you if they want to experience empath design for their offering services and business, or if they just want to, you know, contact you for any other type of healing support or encouragement or have questions? Yeah, I would say, uh, because my website is undergoing transition now, uh, the best place would be to message me on Instagram at Lindsay underscore Kimura. Um, or also my email, which is Lindsay and Kimor at Gmail, which we can link. So I'd say either just direct messaging at this time. Yes. And, you know, I really want to thank you also, Lindsay, for helping me create such a beautiful website. Thank you so much for just matching my energy and all of the intentions that I had for Empath Heart Healing. You captured it. And I'm just so grateful that we are a team, that we are in sacred partnership. And I honor, we honor all of the empaths that are joining us and, you know, presenting your services and your offerings to the world with beauty and elegance and grace and dignity and honor of all. And so we, we just thank you. Remember our lives are sacred, blessings, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Eileen. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> the video. Please keep that in the video. <laughs>